I've talked a lot on this channel about how when figures come with something just slightly different, like a new hat, while we still want it to have a complete collection, it can be a bit annoying to have to spend money on something we more or less already have, and that tends to happen with accessory packs. Now, this is something that's been tried over and over again. It doesn't quite find the footing that it had, especially back in the 80s when accessory packs actually worked. The reason being, and the key difference, was the accessory packs back in the 80s were mail away. They were something where you had to save up your proof of purchase points, or pucha pucha seal, as I apparently called them when I was five, and you would be rewarded. There was a feeling of acquisition, gathering, and a reward. And I loved, I loved my accessory pack. It was the only way to get Yoda's backpack and those Hoth backpacks. And that was the difference. Back in the vintage day, you had to mail away and put forth effort. In the modern era, we've had a lot of attempts to sell accessories just as straight retail packs. And over and over again, these just don't work because it doesn't feel like a complete purchase. Now, sometimes the attempts have been made to put an action figure in with the accessory packs, and it helps a little bit. And that's kind of what we're looking at here. This is probably the most successful of the accessory packs, but in the end, it wasn't that much of a success that the entire second wave got canceled. We'll hit on that at the end. All right, so the accessory pack you're looking at here came out during the Attack of the Clones saga era, and they essentially contained an army builder character with a whole bunch of piece count. And what was really great was some of the piece count for all of the packs was brand new, which is kind of what got me to buy them. I'm only an original trilogy collector, I've noted, so I'm not going to cover the Arena Conflict set, which was the fourth one in the case pack. This was an Attack of the Clones-themed set where you got a battle droid and a whole bunch of stuff from the arena, like Jango Fett's helmet, some generic lightsabers, etc., etc., a bunch of chains for your S&M fun, and a very heavy decoed cannon to go on his back. All right. So let's look at the original trilogy offerings, and that was three of them. The first being the Hoth Survival Accessory Set, which feels like it should just include a Tauntaun stomach, but it doesn't. Instead, it includes, like all the other packs, a trooper and a bunch of accessories. Now, Hoth troopers are great for accessory packs because there's such a huge variety of them, and fans, collectors are willing to have a large army of slightly different looking ones because that's honestly how it was in the movie. It's kind of like how the Rebels had to you know, scrape together their stuff. So having slight repaints of things like Hoth soldiers is very acceptable to collectors, whereas for other soldiers, not so much. You have to have the variety on screen to justify this. And this figure in particular is what's called a, a uh, kit bash. What a kit bash is is when you take two different figures and swap them around. So in this case, you have Luke's body with the existing Hoth trooper's head, Bamo Whammo, a brand new looking Hoth trooper, which is... Eh, for more or less acceptable to fans, because even though this isn't 100% movie accurate, there were a lot of different Hoth troopers walking around and all their outfits were slightly different. And because this is an accessory pack and a higher price, price point, specifically to get more room on that planogram, well, you're going to do that with lots of piece count. And again, that's why we show toys in package, we don't hide them. Each of the figures in this assortment came with one larger accessory, which was newly tooled, which was probably the cause for a lot of people buying these. Or, you know, they just wanted a whole bunch of extra guns and another trooper. In the case of the Hoth trooper, we got a mini tank with an actual projectile launcher with count up two projectiles. And, you know, hey, for kids, this is awesome. Movie accuracy, maybe not so much. Could wind up in the back of a diorama. Well, it's fun, and toys should be fun. All right, next up, on the opposite end of the spectrum, meaning the evil, we have the uh, Death Star accessory set. Not survival set. No, you're not surviving the Death Star, because ask Alderaan. Nobody survives the Death Star. All right, so with this one, once again, we're hitting that higher price point, which back then was $9.99, which is kind of laughable now, because you can't even get a basic figure for under $20. Bucks. But we still got all of those piece counts with our figure. We got Stormtrooper belts. We got mouse droids. We got... Dr. Ball, and a whole bunch of Imperial weapons. Now, unlike the Hoth Trooper, this one wasn't as much of a repaint. Yeah, the skin tone is slightly different, but I think if it wasn't for the extra Stormtrooper equipment, it would have been hard to justify this one. And while we do get a really cool, more accurately scaled Dr. Ball, this was the probably one pack of the three that I found the least interesting, just because the figure itself, the main attraction, wasn't that different. But, hey, you got two droids that we didn't really get in correct scale. I don't even know if these are the right size. But they were unique tools, and they were droids, and that makes them unique characters in my obsessive-compulsive rules. All right. 
Then last up in the released sets was the Endor Victory accessory set. So once again, we were having an accessory and not a survival. Now this one was, I think, probably the best of the three because, well, the originally tooled stuff were really cool. We got our scout trooper, we got a bunch of Endor trooper equipment, different backpacks, showing that, yes, there are two different backpacks, the square one and the not square one, Hasbro. And we got a repaint of the scout trooper or biker scout, existing power of the force, I'm sorry, power of the Jedi tool with a slightly different battle damage where the blast mark is moved more to the center. And then I think for most people, the highlight of the set was the originally tooled item, the Ewok drum set from the celebration, which, yeah, really cool. Imperial helmets for, uh, for drums and, and, and sticks to hit them with. So you do get a lot of really cool Endor stuff. Lots of helmets, lots of backpacks, lots of uh, grenades, stuff recycled from recent figures. But the newly tooled stuff, I think, is probably the best of uh, all of these accessory sets. Now, had these been successful, more were planned. There was going to be a Gungan soldier set with a whole bunch of Naboo stuff. There was going to be a Gamorrean guard, which I guess would have come with a bunch of Jabba the Hutt stuff. And the highlight, I think, would have been the Rebel Technician set for Yavin that was planned. We had, at this point, not received this figure either in the original Kenner line or in the modern Hasbro line. So this would have been a true awesome accessory set because it would have had an original character. We did eventually get this character released in a uh, box set with... Uh, Red Leader and his droid and the little cart thing to drive him around. So, hey, we did get this figure, but if the accessory packs had been successful, we might have gotten him a lot earlier and with a lot more stuff packed in with him. Who knows? Who knows?